Hello, lovely listeners, and welcome to another episode of Denmark and Dice. Does anyone remember what happened last time? Ooh, 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 I, I do, I do, I do. Okay, thank goodness, because I sure don't. Wonderful. Why don't you give us a recap? Okay, so the king, Hamlet's father, died at the beginning of last episode, and Claudius, his brother, lost no time in claiming the throne and marrying Hamlet's mom. Horatio had the fortune, or misfortune, of seeing the ghost of the king on the battlements and warned Hamlet. Meanwhile, my brother Laertes left for college, and my mother, Paulina, told me to stop seeing Hamlet because she was worried they were just a flirt. Unbeknownst to Paulina, Hamlet and I broke up a while ago and decided to be friends instead. Switching back to the battlements, Hamlet spoke to the ghost of their father, who told them that Claudius killed him and then gave Hamlet a magical sword in order to take revenge. Hamlet, Horatio, and I met up the next day, and Hamlet showed us the sword. The ghost showed up again and made us all swear to keep the secret. (gasps) Okay, wow. That's a lot. Yeah, you three have been busy. And speaking of busy, I believe you have some plotting to do. Oh, my poor Hamlet! What wilt thou do? Wilt thou seek revenge? I charge thee, be not more grieved than I am. I have more cause. Thou hast indeed, my lord. However, I prithee, be not sad. Knowest thou not, the sword hath given thee the power thou needest. That they hath now to use. Claudius desires to seek his own power, therefore devise with us how we may thwart his scheme, whither to go and how to destroy him. Seek to bear a charge upon you to bear your griefs yourself most visibly. Horatio, thou dost speak nonsense. Tell us the nature of a mouse-eared chickweed, which is to say, simply. To gather the particulars of the events that transpired, Hamlet must wear a madness about them, to disguise our plot from those it is against. Ah. Oh. Yes, I shall put myself in crazed and unnatural attire, and with dust and leaves smirch my face and hair. Come, let us find the call and begin to stir their nerves. A uh, good plan, but better if you allow for me to sow the seeds of Oleander. To my mother I shall go and complain of your distemper, and offer up four remembrances of yours as proof. After, we shall go to your uncle, where he will hence be convinced of your madness. I take the hat off my head and place it on Hamlet. Um. What's this for? (laughs) Well, you wish to look mad, Hamlet, and no one in their right mind would wear this hat with that tunic. Wait, so Ophelia and Horatio are trying to get Hamlet to pretend to be crazy? Why? So that no one suspects us. Oh, so that you guys can have a cover while trying to uncover the truth. Okay. Uh, Aren't you worried that this is going to make things more convoluted? (laughs) <laughs> uh, no. All right, then. It's it's your plan. Ophelia, after the plotting session ends, you seek out your mother. You eventually find her in her office, looking over some very boring documents. I peek my head through the door and wave to get her attention, trying my best to look worried. How now, Ophelia? What's the matter? Oh, mother, mother, I have been so affrighted. With what, in the name of God? My lady, as I was tending to my redbud tree, Lord Hamlet, with their doublet all embraced, a feathered hat upon their head, which didn't at all match their tunic, their stockings unguarded and torn to the ankle, pale as their shirt, their knees knocking together, and with a look so piteous in nature, as if they had been sent from hell to speak of horrors, they came before me. Mad for thy love? Mother, I do not know, but as you have reasoned yourself, I now truly do fear it. What said they? They took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes they to the length of their arm, and with the other hand o'er their brow, they fell to such a perusal of my face as they would draw it. Long stayed them so. At last they raised a sigh so piteous and profound, as it did seem to shatter and end their being. That done... They let me go, and with their head o'er their shoulder turned, they seemed to find their way without their eyes, for out of doors they went without their helps, and to the last bended their light on me. Come, go with me. I will go seek the king and tell him of this madness. Have you given them any harsh words of late? Uh, No, my good lady, but... Well, unless... No, but... I did as you did command. I did repel their advances and denied their access to me in all forms. Their sight, their presence, 
the possibility of leaving a trace they could see, even made sure my reflection was nowhere near them. That had made them mad! I feared they did but trifle and meant to wreck thee, but beshrew my jealousy! Come, we must consult the king! Very well, my lady. I shall endeavor to bring Horatio, as he and Hamlet are close, and if one were to know what we're bothering the heir, it would be Horatio. Also, he's a medical expert. Oh, a medical expert. Yes, indeed. Excellent idea. Go and fetch him at once. I shall go retrieve him. Only him. I shall only talk to Horatio when I retrieve him, and I will not talk to Hamlet, even if they have handcuffed themselves to him, which is a ridiculous example that is not a common occurrence in the slightest. Alas, it may take time as I have absolutely no clue where Horatio could be. Not even the faintest. Okay, bye. Meet me in the throne room to tell the king. I will. The three of you run through the corridors of the castle, robes and skirts flying behind you over the stone tiles. You reach the throne room in time to hear Paulina's droning voice start up. As Ophelia and Horatio enter the throne room, Hamlet, you stop just before the doorway and press your ear up against the wall to catch every word that is said. The ambassador from Norway, my good lord, is joyfully returned. Very well. See the men. You hear footsteps as another person enters the room. Welcome, my good friend. Say, Voltamand, what from our brother Norway? Most fair return of greetings and desires. His nephew's levies, which to the king of Norway appeared to be preparation against Poland, but he found it to be against your highness, whereat he was enraged. He sent out the order against fortune, brought his son to deceased, who obeys his age and father's commands. Fortinbrost then gives his oath to abandon the forest against your majesty. And now I am to entreat you to give these armies quiet pass. It appears all well to me. Methinks I shall require a trio of ambassadors to deal with this matter. Hear that? They were going to attack your kingdom, but now they just want to pass through it. And Claudius needs three people to go sort it out. Do you know three pals who might want to, I don't know, go on an adventure? Nope. You're the one who makes the NPCs. Are we done here? Yeah, we've got stuff to do. What about all the crazy stuff that's going down in neighboring kingdoms? Fortinbras wanted to invade you, but his dad said it wasn't cool, so now he just wants to pass through your land? Isn't that suspicious? Eh, who cares about international politics? I've got an uncle to murder. <sighs> Paulina taps the king on the shoulder. Your majesty, I now must dis close the true reason I sought you out this morning. I do think that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that, that I do long to hear. My dear Gertrude, she tells me she has found the head and source of all our child's distemper. I doubt it is no other but the main, their father's death and our oh, hasty marriage. Oh, you think? Madam, I swear I am not one to be dramatic. We must agree that they are now gripped by a madness. Now our first mission would be to find out the cause of this effect, or rather to say the cause of this defect. (laughs) Now it remains to reveal the base of their affliction. I have a daughter, while she is mine, who, in her duty and obedience, hath given me this. Now gather and surmise. Mother, dearest, it is my letter. Let me read it. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia, I... That's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. Uh, Mom... Ophelia, came this from Hamlet to you? Uh, Indeed, your highness. But how hath she received the advances of their love? When I caught rumor of their affections, I went 
to work. And my young, innocent child, thus I did bespeak. Noble Hamlet is royalty. Out of thy status this must not be. And then I immediately gave her the order that she should lock herself from their resort, which done, she took the fruits of my advice. And they, having been scorned, fell into a sadness, then to a fast, thence to a watch, thence to a weakness, thence to a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now they reign. And we mourn for. Do you think it is this? It may be very likely. How may we confirm it further? You know, sometimes they walk for hours at a time here in the lobby. So they do indeed. At such a time, Ophelia shall lose herself to them. Be you and I behind an heiress then. Mark the encounter, if they love her not, and be not from their reason fallen thereon. Let me no longer be a doctor, but keep a farm. We will try it. So what you're saying is when Hamlet is walking in the lobby reading, I'll bump into them to test to see if love is the reason for their madness. As the conversation drones on, Hamlet, you feel a shiver run down your spine and cold fingers brushing against your arm. I look around to see what's going on. You see the ghost of your father floating above your elbow. I'm I'm not. What games do you speak of? They are my most trusted allies. They are helping me avenge you. Nobody seems to hear the ghost scream, but as he angrily whooshes out of the room, he knocks your sword from its sheath, and it clatters to the ground. What noise is this? Hamlet, roll stealth. I got a nine plus one. That's a ten. I'm toast. Uh, They are going to see me. Ophelia, help me, please. Oh, oh dear, my mother is here. She'll kill me if I talk to you. I have to go. Sorry, Hamlet, talk to you later. Bye, I gotta go. I run out of the room very, very quickly. Wait. Thank God I happen to have this pocket book of Descartes. But look where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. A pocket book of Descartes. I'll board them presently. How does my noble good Hamlet, my good noble Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. What do you read, my liege? Words, words, words from the pocket book of Descartes. Though this be a madness, yet there is a method in it. Will you walk out the air, my liege? Into my grave? Indeed, that is out of the air. Ere I will most humbly take my leave of you. Claudius, out! Paulina, the king, and the rest of the court hurriedly make their escape. Paulina and Claudius following Horatio to the hallway to set a trap for Hamlet. (laughs) Tedious old fool. Hamlet, you hear two people walking toward you, and for a moment you think it's Paulina coming back to talk to you again. But then they round the corner and you realize it's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, your friends from school. My honored liege, my most dear liege. Oh, my excellent good friends, how dost thou, Guildenstern? Oh, Rosencrantz, good lads, how do you both? I walk up and give them a friendly hug. Happy in that we are not over happy. On fortune's cap, we are not the very button. Then you live about her waist or in the middle of her favors? Faith, her privates we. Ha ha, what's the news? None, my liege, but the world's grown honest. Then doomsday is near. But your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my liege. Denmark's a prison. Then the world is one. A goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. No such matter. But in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? 
to visit you, my liege, no other occasion. Hamlet, make an insight check. That's a 19 minus 1, 18. Okay. When he says this, he can't look you in the eye. You can tell something is off. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, deal justly with me. Come, come, nay, speak. What should we say, my liege? Why, anything, but to the purpose. You were sent for, and there is a kind of confession in your looks. I know the good, wonderful king and queen have sent for you. My liege, we were sent for. What a piece of work is conscious thought. How noble in reasoning, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action how like a celestial, in apprehension how like a god, and the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. (laughs) No, not woman either, though, by your smiling, you seem to say so. My liege, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh, then, when I said man delights not me? I must take my leave of you. Farewell. I scoff, feeling betrayed that they could bow down to the king and queen like this. I turn on my heel and walk away, making sure they can hear the angry click of my boots. All right, let's switch over to the hallway. The four of you, Horatio, Ophelia, Paulina, and Claudius, are currently lying in wait of Hamlet. Ophelia, walk you here. Gracious, so please you, we will hide ourselves in this cabinet. Ophelia, read on this book. That show of such an exercise may make your loneliness appear natural. Okay. My lords, I hear them coming. Ah, let's withdraw. Hide, your highness. Don't tell me to shush. You shush. Yes, my lord, of course. Oh, I can't I'll be breathe. Quiet. You're choking me. Shut up. Uh, yes, my lord. I always shut up. Shh. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing in them. To die, to sleep, to sleep a chance to dream, aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely? Soft, you know, the beautiful, gorgeous, great Ophelia, nymph in thy thoughts, be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. Ophelia, hello. Um, Why are you reading Relationships for Dummies, and why is it upside down? Um, see how they greet her with not an acknowledgement till she is directly in their path? I do indeed. Is this a sign of madness? I fear it is indeed a terrible sign. As I know of madness, and this is a sign signifying it runs deep. (gasps) We must observe more closely and find a way to stop it. Yeah, we've got to help them. That's important. How do you fare for this many a day? I humbly thank you. I'm well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed to re-deliver. I pray you, now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. Memory loss, a most terrible symptom of madness. Oh, a terrible symptom. My honoured lord, you know right well you did. And with them, words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich, their catch-fly perfume lost. Take these again, for to the noble mind rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my liege. If my lord Hamlet were in their right mind, they would never ask such a question, as they know her to be unable to lie. This is a sign I have observed often in my medical studies. It's true, she has no sense about her when she talks untruths. My liege? Are you pretty? What means, your highness? That if you be honest and pretty, your honesty should admit no contrast to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better influence on most than honesty would? 
I truly, for the power of beauty, will sooner transform a saint to a sinner than the force of honesty can turn evil into a sweet likeness. This used to be a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. I did love you once. This is the root of the issue. Indeed, my lady, now we must stay silent to observe. Those gripped by madness must not be spooked. It can drive an even deeper gap between their madness and their mind. Trust me, I'm a med student. Now, shush. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me, for virtue cannot change the core of a person, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. But this cannot be. I draw from much medical experience when I say there is nothing that could have happened recently that could be as terrible as this. Indeed, this is the only possible cause. There have been no major life changes other than this. Certainly not the possible murder of their father. Uh, No, not that. Because that was of natural causes and would in no way affect their mental health. I I was the more deceived... (laughs) Oh no, Ophelia, I didn't mean to- I step on Hamlet's foot. Ouch! My- my foot! Uh, um, get thee to a nunnery? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offences at my back than I have thoughts to put them in imagination to give them shape, or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant knaves all, believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Um, Ophelia, where's your mother? Uh, at home, my liege. I suddenly nod my head to the hiding place to indicate where they are. Pointedly turning in the direction of the hideout, I say, Well, then let the doors be shut upon her, that she may play the fool nowhere but her own house. Farewell. See how they yell at her hiding place? As there is no way they could have a clue we are here, they must be yelling at the cabinet for, as we all know, it is medically proven that those without their wits yell at cabinets, for they believe them to hold demons. Good heavens! Yes, now quiet, or they shall think us demons. Guys, let Ophelia and Hamlet talk. Oh, help them, you sweet heavens! If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery, go, farewell. Oh, heavenly powers, restore them! They must be retrieved, they must be taken from where this surprising bout of madness has gripped them and- Go to, I'll no more on it. It hath made me mad. I say, we shall have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one, a specific one, shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery, go. I leave the room, but wait outside for Ophelia. Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown by madness. They used to be the expectancy and fertilaria flower of the fair state, and I, of ladies most deject and wretched from this bitter and cruel rejection that has completely broken my heart. Now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled, are now out of tune and harsh. That unmatched form and feature of blown youth, now filled by a terrible madness. Oh, woe is me, the poor girl rejected by Hamlet and scorned by their lost love. Oh, I must now go cry myself into comfort in my amaranthus. I run out of the room toward my house, wiping away fake tears swelling up in my eyes. As Ophelia leaves the room, Hamlet, you see three figures sliding out from the cabinet, trying to be very sneaky and hurrying after Ophelia. And with that, I think we've hit a good stopping point for this week. Stay tuned, lovely listeners, and we'll see you next month. A thank you to Cranberries for Heartbreak, a non-profit organization providing cranberries to those whose hearts have been broken. Our theme song is The Magician's Study, written by Kevin Taylor and performed by Lyndon Meyer.
This episode is written by Ariel Northcutt, Alonia Meyer, and Zia Schwartz Kinsey. Actors are Ronan Boren as King Hamlet, Lyndon Meyer as Horatio, Ariel Northcutt as Hamlet, Alonia Meyer as Ophelia, and Zia Schwartz Kinsey as the DM. Editing done by Alonia Meyer, Ariel Northcutt, and Zia Schwartz Kinsey. Additional soundtrack and sound effects by Ariel Northcutt, Lyndon Meyer, and Alonia Meyer. Graphic design by Beatrice Rose. This is an Improv Ed Shakespeare production. Disclaimer, this isn't real D&D, it is in fact a work of fiction. Find us at improvedshakespeare.com or on Instagram at 2B Shakespeare. That's the numeral 2, the letter B, Shakespeare, for more content such as Ophelia's flower language, King Hamlet's violin recordings, Hamlet's attempts at poetry, and what we believe to be a human skull. Thank you for listening! Thank you.